When building a guitar, round over router bits can be a very handy tool to have in your toolbox. In just a few minutes, I'm going to show you three of my favorite round over bits and how they can be useful in different parts of the guitar and you may be surprised. So stick around, let's build some guitars. and this is the electric luthier. Today we'll take a quick look at three of my favorite router bits which are all about rounding edges, the roundover bits. The different sizes are great for different radii of a round edge but also give you options for some less conventional uses when building a guitar. I'll go through all three and show you how you can save time and effort while getting great results fairly quickly. A few words about the anatomy of the roundover bits. These bits will have a shaft, a blade, and a ball bearing. The shaft usually comes as quarter an inch, three-eighths of an inch, or half an inch if your router is from the US and uses inches and 6 millimeters, 8 millimeters, and 12 millimeters for the metrics. The shaft will be one piece with the blade which will have round concave profile. Most bits will have a double blade. The bearing is there to guide the router along the edge and therefore should have the exact same diameter as the inner side of the blade. Make sure you're buying the correct shaft to fit your router or trimmer. And if you're ordering from overseas, make sure you know if you're using millimeters or inches. They do not match. Half an inch is 12.7 millimeters and a 12 millimeter bit may not fit a half inch router collet. Let's start with a small one. If you're not binding the guitar and you want a subtle rounded edge just a bit more than you'd get by sanding the edge, this is the one. This little bit will give a nice subtle edge. To maintain this roundness, you'll probably not want to sand it with grits smaller than 220. A couple of things to look for when setting up your bit and router or trimmer. First, Check for the integrity of the ball bearing. This one came with a cheap Chinese set. I think the whole set was under $20, so my expectations weren't too high to begin with. But when you see a wobbly bearing, you do not want to use it anymore. You may damage your guitar. If the bearing is not firm and flush with the blade, the cutting will not be either. You can easily replace the bearing itself or just get a new bit. It's not a bad idea to have some spare bearings or even borrow from another one from the same set. Just make sure it has the same diameter. The second thing to look for is that the other side of the blade is flush with the base or the table plane if that's how you're using it. If the bit is protruding too much the edge of the blade will create a step before the rounding. This can be a decorative addition when done on purpose, but is usually not what you're looking for. This can be fixed with sanding, but the result will not give the radius you want since you've routed too much material. If on the other hand the bit is too deep in the base, you'll get an uneven radius which will have a sharper angle at the top. Since not enough material was shaved here, the base can be adjusted and a second pass will remedy the problem. It is a good habit to always check that the blade is properly mounted on a scrap piece of wood. The second bit I'm going to talk about has a slightly larger diameter of about half an inch or 12 millimeters. If you're a Stratocaster fan, 
This one is a must have. After you've cut out the shape of the body and properly sanded the outline edge, this bit will give you the roundness for the majority of the body. You'll still need to sculpt the elbow area and the belly cut out, but this will take care of the rest. You do need to be careful around the neck pocket. Some older models actually use a 7 16th radius bit, but the difference is, is minute. The same precautions will need to be taken when mounting it and adjusting the height in relations to the base. However, do take into account that you will be removing more material than the smaller one. What that means is that you will encounter more resistance on the one hand and more pull or kickback if you're not careful. This also increases the chances of tear-outs. With the roundover bit, you do not always have a choice to pick the right routing direction in regards to the wood grain. So you should learn how to route in smaller sections and incremental depth. Don't just push it all in. Take little bites off and advance till you get there. You can always have a final pass to smooth out any inconsistencies. The third bit is larger and used in a less conventional way, but in the age of CNC's anything goes. This is a non-even radius of about one inch. You can get similar bits with specs matching your preference, but the principle is the same. I use this bit for rounding the back of the neck. One pass on each side will give you a perfect U-shape. If you prefer a rounder C cross section or a vintage V, you can either file and sand a bit more to achieve just that, or you may be able to find just the right bit for the profile that you desire. If you're going to manually finish it up, you can even do a non-symmetrical shape neck. What I'm getting at is that you will eliminate about 95% of the rough grinding and filing with this simple bit. A few tips for routing the back of the neck. This will definitely be better done on a table and not with a handheld router. Holding your router straight, especially after you've done one side, is next to impossible because you have very little flat area. If you had to, I would make a jig to support it. Take the thickness into account with the fretboard. You may be left with a thicker spine in the middle of the back between the two routes and you can sand or plane that manually. If you want the thickness to be gradual you should sand it flat with the gradual thickness before routing. Remember to take into account the headstock and volute on one side and the heel on the other side. Don't route too far. Measure and mark your limits taking the whole radius into account. And lastly, I have to remind everyone who's not experienced with routers to give them that extra measure of attention and respect. They are fast, sharp, loud, and make a lot of sawdust. Be careful and use protective gear for your eyes, ears, mouth, and nose. I do encourage testing and playing around with scrap pieces of wood to get used to these tools and make all the little mistakes and mishaps as painless as possible for both you and your guitar. I hope this was helpful and will help you get into those round edges with ease. If you want more information about building electric guitars, make sure to subscribe, hit the bell button to get notified. Check out the links below and come visit us at theelectricluthier.com.